Today we'll be blessing down the rains in Africa at Songhai, where we conquer all of West Africa and Central Africa before 1500. And if we get 8,000 likes on the video, I'll do a Congo achievement run where we conquer all of Africa before 1550. Also remember to subscribe or I'll steal your cat. Just casual Romanian jokes. Songhai has a very different starting situation than most nations in EU4 and that is mainly because it actually starts with a trash leader and a 74 years old heir, both of which have to go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make them both generals for our armies and apparently this guy is not really that bad. We also have a strange estate situation where we only start with 27% crownlands. So in order to give the third plus one mana, we have to seize crownlands first and sell titles after that means that we have zero crownlands from day one but we'll get it to 20% crownlands in just five years and you'll see in a few moments how we're gonna be using the money that we took from the estates to recruit the free company in the province of Gao and after you've recruited the free company you can do your first mission that essentially gives you claims on everybody who's neighboring you which means we have unlimited possibilities for attack most of the times for my trial runs I've noticed that Timbuktu allies Mali so we're gonna leave them off for a little bit later we're gonna attack whichever nation did not actually get any actual alliances at the start so after one month we're gonna attack a second nation before they get more alliances in my situation that will be the nation of Fangadungu and their ally to Wagadugu together with Oyo so I'm gonna be annexing all four of these nations in the first two wars hey look at that we siege down Yatenga that means we can fully annex them now and after this look at my crown loans going from zero percent to five percent already from just a few extra provinces first we got to relieve our capital which is being besieged as we speak hopefully we manage to win this because they have slightly more troops i'm just kidding of course we're gonna win this we even have the extra troops from the garrison that we didn't even need so we're fine mosi number two is also dead and we're gonna fully annex them let's go for mosi number three sadly benin took a big chunk out of oyo so i cannot actually fully annex whoa what i actually can piece them out now without having to worry about the army they have there oh i still have to worry about them they're obviously separatists let's core everything up here and uh, we can do the mission eliminate the mossy threat that gives us the ability to either convert them to sunni which is our current religion or if we choose the second option eventually we'll be able to go back to fetishist i'm gonna stay with sunni for now one very important aspect to keep in mind in the west african parts is the fact that there's actually one two three different culture groups Groups. So when you expand, make sure you even out between the three culture groups or make sure you take out everybody in a particular culture group before you go to the next one. So for that particular reason, what we'll do now is we're going to attack Kong together with Jolof and Jene, basically everybody in this area here. Alrighty boys, Kong is down. That means we just got to siege down the rest of Jene. So apparently Timbuktu also attacked Jene and this can happen. They will try to snipe your stuff out, but rightful Songhai claims will always be ours. Jolof got completely wiped out by Mali over here, so it means we don't need to deal with them anymore. That means we can start piecing out people. We'll be piecing out Jene first, and uh, coalition-wise almost nobody would join in against us, followed by Kong, and now we do have a few nations in the coalition, but these are exactly the nations that we'll be attacking. Before we do that, however, we gotta do our mission improve the bureaucracy because our first and second leaders died. That means we gotta completely different person here and it means we can spawn in feudalism we can even accept this since we have the money now and we can get our next military tech a lot cheaper we can get some new rivals and i obviously will be going for katsina and we can do the conquest of jenna changing the religion in the province of jenna to sunni guys you're about to witness a 69 head move i am letting the rebels enforce their demands on me and why is that Ludi? why are you letting these filthy pretenders enforce their their demands here's why guys because once they do enforce their demands we don't have a regency so we can attack whoever we want we also get a actually better leader than the one we had that's actually surprising and the rebel army becomes our troops all the way until we fill up our land force limit so we now have double the army from accepting the pretender rebels and now of course it is time for war again after a short three years break obviously we'll be attacking everyone 
around us and we'll be slaughtering them also. This time we're taking everybody in the South culture group here, which means we're not going to have any of these nations joining future coalitions. Hey, look at that. We got military tech for we're a litchi up to tech with our military technology. So we shouldn't have any issues killing off everybody here. I'm pretty sure everyone is not even military tech three. They're still military tech two, man. All of them. I'm not sure how I feel about this air. He's great with administrating the empire, but we're a military empire. So I think this guy is going to be Yeetus Maximus. The homie is no more. Now this actually is Azal's armies. <laughs> Oh, you did. And that means your country a dead too. So, uh, no more Zazao. I guess I'll Zazao you later. All right, the reign of the Southern tribes is over. They're all long gone now. And as token of how little the Northern and the Eastern tribes care about this, there's literally no coalition. Look at this. This is actually freaking insane. 15 aggressive expansion, 37 with Mali, and that's pretty much it. Not much at all, man. But guess what, guys? A golden opportunity opportunity has arrived with Timbuktu actually canceled their alliance with Mali which means that we can attack Timbuktu so we can both annex air and Timbuktu in the same war thus fulfilling our two missions that give us claims on the rest of the West African parts so let's do this everybody oh yeah shuck uh, Jolof is out or Timbuktu they have the same flag okay oh that's a lot of cords we have here finally man the siege of air took insanely long peace out air and that means we can do the stop the raids mission that lets us have the decision to colonize the corridor once we have a province with five base manpower we also can start propagating our religion now in this area since we have the majority of the trade power and of course it also means that we can fully annex the nation of Timbuktu I am completely ignoring Jolof for the second time simply because I cannot be bothered to get there until I actually finish with this area and guys you have to be extra careful with this next mission so essentially what this does is it gives us the ability to colonize Tuat as well as the next mission once we've actually taken the rest of Jolof and Jene it actually gives us a colony in these four provinces but we don't have a direct route there until we kill Mali we first actually need to attack and destroy Mali so let's bring our troops over by the border with Mali we've also developed the province of Jene once and now we have five manpower there but that means we can both colonize Tuat and the corridor over here that leads to the Tunisians. We're not going to do it just yet. We need to actually secure this area before we start going into the Maghreb. One of the things that makes a U4 player good is being situationally aware. What does that mean? I was about to attack Mali, but then I saw that Yawo, which is already 88% war score, is attacking Katina. So if they annex Katina, I will not be able to annex Yawo in one war, and I want to annex them in one war, so I'm going to attack Yawo instead of attacking Mali together with Katsina and all these other small insignificant nations in the eastern part of my country. One more thing I'm going to do is because I have four professionalism I'm going to recruit one more general and afterwards I'm going to slack in recruitment and after that I'm going to recruit the free company as well. If I recruited the free company without slackening I would have lost four professionalism for no reason. Wait what? I got an achievement? Own Timbuktu as Songha? I didn't even know that's even an achievement. Looks like the homies are trying to get back into town. Nope. I love this name, man. I love the country name. It's just nope. Nope. Hey, what's up, everybody? Nope. Oh, hello there, great power status. Nice. And we can also propagate religion and the other trade node that we have. So both of our trade nodes are now essentially making all the other provinces Sunni. Until the death of Suleiman the Magnificent, idea cost minus... What? Uh, Golden Age of Timbuktu. We do have quite a few rebels spawning in, but it's uh, really not a massive deal. We're going to attack Yawa now. Let's actually get our claims first. We can get one, two amazing claims. And let's do it, boys let's do it they actually have a, a level 2 fort in borno from Kanem borno and we've also unseaged a daura for ourselves that means we can fully annex the nation of uh, katsina and after that concentratio and core up actually we can wipe them out now we don't need to stack wipe the other 4,000 they got not gonna sugarcoat this guys you're gonna be dealing with a bunch of rebels in this playthrough because you do have a ton of different cultures that you're conquering as well as a ton of not sunni provinces 
expenses that you're conquering. Don't be afraid to get the five one percent burger loans and then hiring some mercenary units to deal with your rebels. Remember to continuously lower autonomy even if it spawns in rebels. It is a-okay because rebels are actually good for your country. Let me put this into perspective shall I? 87 army tradition because I've been fighting either rebels or other nations. So that means if I recruit a general he definitely will be an absolute chad. Look at this 5252. Five, two. He has all the good pips in all the wrong places. Damn it sir web. Whoa hush stability cost modifier. You know what? Sure let's go for that. Jenna is taken back. That means we can attack the nation of uh, Mali. Let's go and wipe out their armies. Boom you dead Mali. I'm sure they have more than 3,000 troops though. They got another 9k somewhere. Come on would die. Come at me bruh. And you did. Oh wow Mali is a fellow free company enjoyer. Hey we can get the admin tech 5. That means we got our first ideas everybody. Okay I think I have the war score I need. Yes I do. So I'm gonna piece him out now. I'm gonna take this exact piece deal and um that's it. And the next war I just need to take three more provinces and that's pretty much the end of it. Can use my available spy network to get some claims in the meanwhile. And we also can now do the conquest of Mumba Salahala which means we now have colonized these four provinces. We can also do take the empire title now which means that everybody in the Mande culture group is an accepted culture. Let's also go for this one so we get the autonomy change reduction and we can even sell some crownlands and seize a little bit as well. That means we got a bunch of money to fix our economy. Actually whilst we're waiting for all of that we can start with the colonization of Tuat and again we're sending our troops to Tuat so we can wipe out the natives there was nobody here when we arrived i promise also equally important to note is that whenever you colonize either the corridor or whenever you colonize to what the province that has five military development will lose two military development so you're gonna have to dev it up again you're essentially giving two mil dev for basically two free provinces skipping a bit into the future we actually managed to unlock our first two exploration ideas and we are exploring the coastline around here here with our fleet whilst at the same time we're getting claimed so we can attack Congo and the Moroccans. We apparently have also found out that the Castilians are trying to get a colony in Africa and we're not gonna let them do that. We're gonna rival them and we will be attacking them as soon as we actually are ready for that. We're a little bit behind in technology because we have spawned the Renaissance in the province of Jene so that it's cheaper to tech up after we actually accept Renaissance. We also killed a native in Gabon so that we don't need to worry about them rebelling and killing off our colony here and we are getting the colony in Gabon so we can actually get the claim on Congo. One more thing that you can do once you actually convert all the provinces that were Mosi lands to Sunni is you get minus 100 autonomy and local separatism minus 10 for all the previous Mosi lands so that is quite a few provinces south of your main Songhai land. Because of the extra gold mines that we have as well and we've pretty much developed most of these to uh, 10 production. We're getting a hot dang huge amount of gold. In fact, let's actually continue to develop this one. This is 10 as well. So now we're actually getting 10 ducats flat just from gold alone. Actually, we can get more because autonomy was not 12 ducats flat, man, from gold alone. That is insane. So we got a 16 on the plus with our overall economy. 17 actually. Contact with the Maghreb is done, which means means we actually get a permanent claim on the entirety of the Maghreb region. That means all of Morocco, Tunisia, and Tlemcen. Hey, the end of the Hajj is over and we have a buttload of rebels around our entire country once more. Because of the high amount of rebels that you're gonna have in your playthrough, especially in the early game, I recommend that you have one army assigned to autonomous rebel suppression continuously. And I also recommend for the beginning, this can be a mercenary army. You can change it to a regular army later on though. But don't forget, whilst you are dealing with the rebels, do continue to expand around the world wherever you need to. Especially in the early game in Congo, it's very easy to expand into. Don't let the rebels prevent you from becoming a Chad African warlord. Another thing that I personally prefer to do is convert all the Mosi lands to Songhai lands after you've done the mission that lowers the separatism and the autonomy. Why did I do this? Because if it's Songhai, I'm not going to have any rebels ever and it only costs like 19 diplo per province to do it since most of these are three development and if they are above three development just lower the tax dev and get them down to acceptable numbers as you can see i'm actually converting all of the 
Mossi lands now. Since Mossi is not even an accepted culture, so there's literally no reason for these lands to be Mossi when they can obviously be Songhai. I think I'm pretty much done with this war. I can take as much as I want, I believe. Yep, I can fully annex uh, Congo and take all the money they have as well. No, they don't agree with me taking their money. Just the full annexation, bruh. Alright, Ski, now we have a foothold in the Central African part. That means next up is basically conquering everything else. Let's also get a Conquistador so we can start exploring these areas in the Central African part. We can do another quick cheeky war against these guys in Tio to get that juicy copper mine that they have. Alright, well, Mali siege down. That means we can fully annex them and we're going to be revoking all of their cores as well so we don't get any pesky Mali separatists, albeit most of these are probably going to be other cultures, not Mali. Hot dang, that's a lot of admin points to core these three provinces, but that's because they're juicy. Look at this, 16 dev, 9 and 14 dev. We can dev this up another four times and get a massive amount of gold from it. Let's also continue our expansion in the southern parts here and uh, take out whatever is left. And we are assembling another army in the north so we can start expanding into the Maghreb, actually. Hey, we siege down Cuba. Wondering what the revolutionaries would say about this. Okie dokes, no more Cuba Libre. A miracle just happened. One stability and the religion of Moshi changes to Sunni. That's probably the first time I've ever seen that event. Hey, look at that. I can actually fully annex everybody here and even get two ducats from this war. What else could a man want from a war like this? Am I right? All right, that means we got to take care of the rebels also. And we can even oh, annex the nation of uh, Luba, which is really the reason why we attack the other nations so that we can uh, fully annex both Luba and Tio. As such, literally nobody is left in the Congo region except the three nations we have to also take out. Ignore these guys. They don't exist really. We've also exploited a lot of our base tax so we can use the extra money to improve our nation's economy by building extra specific buildings that we need. And another 69 head move is the fact that we're going to be vassalizing Fezan. They're allied to the Ottomans, Morocco and us. So it would be kind of hard for me to actually go to war with the uh, four province miner and have to fight the Ottomans just to get these four provinces. A lot easier, more comfortable to just vassalize them. I think we've built enough workshops as well. We can take advantage of the construct workshops mission, but most importantly, we can do the second and third missions. For this one, we just need to have three provinces that are cloth with 20 development and three provinces that are salt with 10 development. And we have that right now. And la creme de la creme, the wealth of West Africa, makes your economy absolutely skyrocket. So what this actually does is it offers you the controlled gold mining privilege. There you go, boys. Monthly inflation and gold depletion chance minus 75%. That is massive. It essentially, it almost means that you'll never have gold mines that deplete. As well as they don't offer much inflation, so you don't need to struggle with that. And we can also do the eradicate Mali mission that offers us claims on Jolof and the Niger area, both of which we already have a long since conquered. One final war as well for the Central African parts and we're done here. Oh dear, it looks like we got a new king here and our heir is once more absolutely useless. And it's also time that we start expanding into the Maghreb with an initial expansion into Morocco. You know what? Nobody has time to wait for sieges like this, so I'm just gonna barrage all of their forts. It's better to barrage as it lowers the amount of time we need to wait until these forts actually fall. And I think that's pretty much it. We took all of their forts and we're gonna take all of the south part of Morocco in the first war. It's not 15 provinces, which is what we need for the mission, but in the next war we can take an extra three provinces. Hey, would you look at that? The Ashanti have decided to appear and guess what? They're gonna disappear just as quick as they've appeared. Apparently, I actually have a permanent claim on this one province, so I can just attack him right now. I'm also gonna be recruiting some more units. I wanna replace my mercenaries eventually. Alright, time for Ashanti to go Babanti, Daryago, and now for la creme de la creme, we're gonna start doing our military missions. And the, before we do that mission, we actually need to do something else. We're gonna give out the Amirs and Officer Corps so we get cheaper generals because we're gonna be recruiting a bunch of generals right now. Let's go. We need 30% professionalism, so we're gonna be recruiting up to 30%. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go full in. We're up to 35%. Screw it. And we also need to make our leader a general himself. That means we do the army professionalism mission, which gives us 2.5% discipline and yearly tradition until the death of our leader, or we can get 200 military power. Both of these are obviously extremely good, especially
especially the army tradition one but i'm actually going to go for the military power because i'm going to invest that power as well in more generals and as such increase my professionalism because later on i'm going to need 80 percent professionalism to do another mission and look at the officer cord that we have right now boys these guys are absolute chads the finest of the finest imagine having only two and three star generals in your armies so to give an overview of everything that's happened essentially we went from a small and significant country to basically dominate all of africa here a hundred thousand troops in the field and we still have a hundred ducats total income and 34 profit a super professional army as well as an amazing mission tree i'm actually really enjoying this playthrough guys so if you want to see a part two for just nine thousand likes we'll be doing the ultimate military achievement where as songhai we got to get prussia and nepal as our marches and of course for eight thousand likes we'll be doing the congo guide and if you are binging my videos consider subscribing i'm trying to get to a hundred thousand which is the first step in my path towards global domination i mean towards getting the verified tick that is what i meant that is what i meant you will now subscribe and I want to give a very big thank you to all of my channel members, Patreon members, as well as my Twitch supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do this without all of your support. You guys are absolutely amazing.